So my buddy Chris brought me his uh, Decathlon Riverside and he said it was uh, riding sluggishly. So keep watching and we'll take a look and uh, diagnose what's going on, maybe fix it up for him. So first thing is uh, I'm going to wash it off here because, you know, it's really, really dirty. And while I'm doing that, I'll just kind of take a peek, you know, do like a little inspection and it looks okay. But we'll have to do something a little more in depth. So again, we have a Decathlon Riverside. It's a Touring 520. We got uh, Tektro hydraulic brakes. Eh, that looks good. Like levers not bottoming out. It looks all right. And we got like a, okay, so definitely you have a Dynamo front hub, so Shimano Dynamo. It's not necessarily Shimano, but, and the, uh, the fender, it's looking okay. Next, we'll just take a peek at the crank, and it kind of feels a little sluggish. So, just look at the wheel, like, it's rolling okay, like, it seems all right. Um, but still, it's not super smooth. And, <laughs> I don't know if you just saw that, but uh, we'll get to it. And, yeah, like, seems all right like there's a bit of a wave in there but i can't really see that okay yeah yeah it's a little sluggish here it's, it's grabbing onto the fender okay or mud guard or whatever you want to call it so we'll have to fix that and it's not even worth it to try to like check the shifting because you know the wheel's impeded now there's a lot of slack there in that rear cable and that uh, that derailleur maybe you know it looks a bit like it, it could either be like a new a knockoff of uh, Shimano or Strand. So we'll just have to see. So what I'm gonna do is just go right to the website, check this bike out and see what parts they have on it. Scroll down, we'll look for the, the features. And now if you're like one of those, like, you know, if, if you're doing this kind of thing for yourself, you, you really should check and see what you got. So the drivetrain, like we got micro shift, you know, the wheels, okay. So we're gonna look at the wheels here cause I saw some problems with it. And it's a 36 hole, rim and spokes which you know are very very difficult to replace these days and of course if we did we need to know like what kind of hub so we have a through axle 142 by 12 and there's that Shimano Dynamo what else do they have in here tires no, it doesn't matter so the drivetrain again micro shift the micro shift is it, it's always been a uh, you know an up there kind of I guess OEM type brand on bikes that uh, they're basically clones of Shimano or SRAM one thing I noticed here on the front wheel is that the, uh, the the rotor is kind of rubbing on the pads. Now, I'm just going to use my truing fork to try to get it because I don't really have a replacement rotor because it's a uh, it's a center lock hub. So all I have are six bolt. So I have to make do with what we got and it seems to have done the job. Now, the second thing we got to do here is we have to, uh, you know, let the, the wheel spin freely by fixing up this fender here. It's just grabbing onto the tire and eventually it's just gonna break the uh, the fender. So what we have to do is just move it over a little bit. So we're just gonna loosen it and just move the fender over a little bit, which, you know, fixed it perfectly. Now it, the wheel spins perfectly freely, but you know, upon fixing that, we come across our next problem. There's a big wave in the wheel and it's not the tire because I was able to see it when I did my little inspection there. And here, I'll, I'll try to show it there. Do you see it? It just kind of like, there's a huge wave that boots over to the uh, disc side of the wheel and we can't have that. Now, it works fine in a uh, in a disc brake kind of scenario here because there are no pads to slap against the rim. So what I did is I marked off where that problem was and I'm just gonna try to fix it as best I can. You know, otherwise we have to replace the wheel and I'm not sure he really wants that expense yet. So I wanna make sure that he can at least ride it in case, uh, he does want a new wheel and he has to like look for one or I have to build him one. I can do it quickly, but I'm not gonna do anything until uh, I get the uh, the go ahead. So we're just gonna loosen a little bit, tighten a little bit, and it's always the same. Like we're just gonna do like little bits here and there, but you know, there's a problem with the, uh, the rim <laughs> and we'll see it in a sec, just keep watching. So I'm just gonna have to tighten this one up here and sometimes you loosen instead of tightening and it kind of does, it, it gives the, uh, the the same effect. Now, he said he was messing around with it, so I don't know like what he's done. I don't know where he's tight and I don't know where he's loosened, but you'll see I have uh, I have a little more to do. And really all I'm doing is I'm overcompensating on this one spoke here, which, you know, it's really not gonna be that great, but it'll help him out until I, we can get him a new wheel or until he decides what he wants to do. Like, I don't know if he has to come up with cash or go rob a bank or something, like, I don't know. So I'm just making sure with what he has is uh, somewhat rideable. 
until, you know, he totally destroys it. <laughs> now, it should be noted that he's a pretty big guy. He's kind of like a, you know, like a Mitchell Hooper type big. And there. This is one of the problems with big dudes like that is the spokes can get pulled right out of the rim. We're just going to move over and test out the, the shifter. Maybe there was a problem there, but it seems to have worked okay. I know we're missing shifts, so what we're going to do is we're just... First thing is just uh, tighten up the cable a little bit. I didn't show it, but you know, like the shifts aren't even making it down to the lower cogs, so the smaller cogs, which are actually the higher gears, so you know, upshifting. And we're just going to test it out a little bit. We've got a lot more tension on the cable, and let's see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> so it's stuck here. So I don't know. It's not really dropping. Let's see. So it's downshifting. So it's moving up to the larger cogs. Okay. It's really hard to know. Like we want them to drop. So we have to, we're, we're going to test out the, uh, the limit screws and see if that works. Like maybe he was messing with it. Maybe he brought it to a point where he's like, "Ugh, I'm done. And then he just kind of hands it off and then I, I'll figure it out. Now this uh, low limit screw, which is for the small cogs is it was screwed in a lot. Like, <laughs> So maybe it was just adjusted improperly. I don't know. But now, like, we see that we've let it out and nothing happened. There was no, uh, the chain wasn't dropping to the lower one. So we're just going to change the cable. Maybe that's uh, the next step. So we'll just test out the, the shifters without any tension on the cable. And they all, uh, they're all clicking just fine. They're hitting the shifts. And well, now we have to replace the cable. So I'll just do my new little trick there with uh, the grease. So just shove it into the housing and spread the grease along as it flows through. Now, maybe there's something stuck. I don't know. I'm just gonna make sure there's extra grease that gets into the housing near the end of the cable. So what I did there is I just added a little extra grease and I fed the cable back through, just to make sure the grease is in there. So I tightened it up a little bit, like not too much. So what's happening here is the chain is still on the big cog and there's no tension on the derailleur whatsoever. That's not right. <laughs> so I think we found our problem and I think it's the derailleur. So we just dropped the chain now perfectly without any tension on the derailleur. And what we got to do is take the derailleur off and service it. So we just got to take the chain off and the cable's not attached. So we just got to uh, take the derailleur off just like so. And what we're going to do here is just kind of test it. We can see it's, it's really stiff. And now here's our problem. Here's our problem with the shifting anyway, like at least with the shifting. So the, uh, the pivot points, they just need grease or they need oil. They need to be loosened up. So, you know, the, the clutch area, you can hear it kind of works perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is just use some light mineral oil, which is basically baby oil for me. And we're just going to put a whole bunch on the pivot points and work it in. I, I'm not going to show it. I'm going to fast forward here. But what I did is I used this like this krill oil, which is a, a little bit he more heavy duty. And hopefully it'll just like stay in there. And whatever's left of the, uh, the light mineral oil will kind of... Uh, you know, dilute it a little bit and help it penetrate maybe just that little bit more. So here we're just going to reinstall the derailleur and as you can see it, it's moving a little bit better. Put the chain back on and string it up properly and then we're going to give it a good test. First though we have to install the cable and we're going to give it you know not too much slack but enough slack like enough is actually it seems like it's too little and we saw that right at the beginning so it wasn't really the the uh, the cable tension that was the problem. So now we're going to see if it drops onto that smallest cog and nothing is happening. <laughs> Nothing's happening. So we're going to climb the gears here up to the big cog. You can see it's pretty smooth. It's like, it's actually really smooth and it's working. Okay. There's, there's a little bit of jankiness. We're just going to drop down to the smaller cogs and hopefully it just drops right onto that smallest cog. And of course it doesn't. So we're just going to test it out here and it works okay. I did uh, use the limit adjuster for the large cog, but I'm not going to show. It's not really that big a deal. And you know, I, I actually did find a fix for the, the small cog, but I'm going to make a, a separate video on that because it's kind of a little trick that you use with SRAM rear derailleurs. So as we can see here, um, I fixed it up and it's working perfectly fine, except for that small cog. Now, there's still some resistance here on the crank and we'll see uh, in the next video where I fix the rear derailleur problem, if that cleans it up a little bit. 
And there you go, you can see that there's just that little bit, like a uh, little bit of resistance and I'm only using one finger, so it's not that big a deal, but you know, for a bike with this price point, everything should just uh, be working perfectly fine. So what we did here is we just kind of uh, fix up the, the front wheel as best we could. We just used a truing fork on the center lock rotor. We changed the front uh, tire and everything's spinning nice and smooth. So. You can see here with the uh, the dynamo on, so the light on, it's spinning quite smoothly. And if we turn it off, it's like it spins forever. <laughs> like, that's spinning really, really well. And all we used was the truing fork. Now, I would have preferred to change the uh, rotor, but sometimes you just can't. And now, again, we uh, cleaned up the rear derailleur. We went through all the steps, you know, changing the cable, checking the shifter, uh, re-greasing the uh, insides of the housing. And we still have this problem here with the, uh, the rear derailleur. Everything's kind of working except for that last cog. And you know, the spokes are ripping through the uh, rim, so it's causing the wheel to be kind of wobbly. And there's nothing we can really do about that. It, the wheel has to be replaced, or at least the wheel has to be rebuilt to a new rim. And this is uh, kind of a common problem with really, really big guys. I hope this video helps you out with diagnosing uh, different types of issues on different kind of bikes. And if you want to see me work on other bikes, you can click right here.